Well, thank you. Um, I had my little camera assistant, Ellie, help me out here. Uh, this is my entry into the Love of Freddy build, um, sponsored by Martin, uh, the international British modeler. And um, I chose the P38 Lightning uh, because it's not being modeled a lot right now. Um, I bought a Revell kit, which arrived today. And uh, this can be built in three versions. Uh, Richard Bong's uh, last plane he fought with. Uh, which he named after his wife Marge. Um, interesting plane in the fact that it's silver and had a photograph of his wife and her name. And uh, on the box art, it's showing 30 victories. And uh, according to history, Richard Bong scored something between 38 and 40. Uh, I always thought it was 38, but uh, I've read here something that says 40. Uh, this plane can also be built. Uh, as the Pathfinder version, which was a two-man unarmed P-38, which carried a observer in the nose, um, and uh, they did have the ability to bomb, and um, it was used mainly for photo reconnaissance or bombing, and it could also be built as the um, Lightning um, Night Fighter, which was done in a gloss black and was a two-pilot, or Two passenger airplane as well. Um, had a radio or a radar operator in the rear, the uh, fighter pilot in the front, armed pretty much the same. Uh, they also had the uh, earlier versions of radar and they could also carry rockets. Um, all the P 38s could carry bombs or drop tanks. This particular model is the one that I built. I believe it was a monogram, it might have been a Rebel. But uh, this was the one and only P-38 I ever built. And I built it when I was 12 years old, so it's 46 years ago. Um, opening the box, it is a uh, top opening box, unlike the German Revell kits. And uh, because the box is kind of big and floppy, they've added... Uh, support in between which helps keep it from being crushed which I think is a pretty good idea um, in the box we have one bag containing all the gray sprues and we'll get into that in a moment um, we have another bag which contains black plastic molded parts we'll get into that uh, we also have the clear parts we'll get into that and then we have the instructions, which we will get into finally. So, here we are. The uh, clear parts I'm not going to open. Uh, they have all the clear parts for the five-piece canopy for the P-38. Uh, P-38 had a front canopy, rear canopy, side windows, which uh, they cranked them up like a car window. Um, they had cranks. And then there was a uh, top section, which was hinged at the rear, uh, which flipped over the top. It was pulled down first, and the side windows were cranked up. This piece is for the Night Fighter version. Uh, this is a rear bubble, and my understanding was the Night Fighter uh, crewman that flew in this one, uh, extremely claustrophobic. They had to bend their head over in order to fit under it. The um, nose canopy here. Um, was for the Pathfinder version, which was a reconnaissance and bombing aircraft. And uh, so it had a clear nose, didn't carry the standard weapons. Uh, side windows for, uh, I believe, the Pathfinder. I think that's side windows for Pathfinder. Um, looks to me that we have some uh, other glass here, which I'm not sure exactly at this point where all those might go. Um, but they don't look too bad. For 148. Uh, the black plastic sprues uh, looks to me to be primarily the armament. Uh, we have 50 caliber machine guns, looks like a 20 millimeter cannon mounted on the uh, base for the guns. Um, we have uh, two bombs here, uh, the turbochargers, uh, we have the radar dome for the night fighter version. 
Uh, looks possibly like uh, perhaps pedo tube, um, some other things I can't really identify at this point, and uh, bomb fins, um, tires, uh, front, front wheel, side wheels, um, some other things that I'm sure will reveal themselves in the instructions. Now the silver bag um, we have here is the remaining parts of the overall structure. And I hope they're not too badly scratched. We have the upper wing and uh, extra screws. Um, See, there's something here. I had to turn the light on. Um, nothing I can really, except for the fact that it says Zongshan. <laughs> that might be being molded by China. The parts themselves look pretty good. Um, there's a lot of flash on the screw, but I don't really see a whole lot of flash on the parts. Um, these are these are raised panel lines, not recessed. Um, there may be a little recessing around the aileron to flat joint. Um, the finish is fairly nice. I mean, it's quite nice. Um, it appears that the flap and aileron, or flap in particular, might be fabric covered. And the uh, aileron has a, a texture as well. I will have to look at my notes. I, I had thought that the P30 was entirely made of aluminum. Um, it just may be a finish that they put on it. Um, a lot of riveting detail. Um, and for the basic part, I see no flash. The next screw that I'm pulling out, um, uh, this has um, the rear part of the fuselage or what appears to be the Night Fighter version where they have the second seat behind. Um, this appears to be um, the lower part of the nose where they had the cameras mounted on the Pathfinder. We have some rockets here. Um, not sure exactly what these are for. Uh, drop tanks and this would be a nose for this is a nose piece. Not sure for which version. And we have some cockpit side panels. Um, looks like maybe a seat base. Uh, I could be wrong there. And I don't see any flash on the parts themselves, which is, is nice. There may be a little bit of flash here on the, this is the, the nose wheel well door, uh, nose gear door. The uh, interior structure detail is not too bad. this this would be this would be the starboard boom and uh, base for the engine compartment and uh, the horizontal stabilizer um, the finish is fairly nice uh, nice rivet detail the intakes uh, which will determine the Biggest change uh, between the H and the J. Um, in the early models of the P38, they had their uh, intercoolers for the turbos mounted in the wings. And in the J model, they removed them and put them uh, in the cowling in the lower gills. And uh, this was to uh, better protect them because uh, with the intercoolers in the wings, 
there were several problems that developed. Um, they could be um, exploded due to improper settings. Um, they weren't real efficient. And um, then uh, they were more susceptible to enemy damage during firing uh, due to their location. So they moved them into the, the chin of the engine nacelle, uh, which makes it very easy to see a J uh, or an L um, versus other, other ones because they had a chin screw underneath the front of the engine. So they went from a very smooth tapering nose to where it had a chin. And that's what this is all about. Um, this this here is a uh, uh, pilot accessing step. The P-38 set very tall on its landing gear, so they had a step that was located in the center pod, which slid out, was like a miniature stair, and then it would retract, of course, uh, at, during flight. And then these are counterweights for the elevator, and uh, as I briefly mentioned earlier, um, the early P-38s had a lot of trouble uh, with compressibility. They would, they would approach the speed of sound and the <coughs> aerodynamic effect would make the elevator ineffective. And um, so by adding counterweights and, and with the J model they introduced dive flaps to help uh, reduce the speed of the dive, they overcame the compressibility issue. Uh, a lot of pilots were killed in early P-38s because once they entered a dive they wanted to nose over and uh, some of them never recovered. Usually if they entered a dive from high enough altitude by the time they entered the lower atmosphere beneath 10,000 feet they would get enough um, air pressure to be able to make the elevator effective and um, but um, if they entered a dive too low to the ground uh, the plane would likely just nose over and they couldn't bring it out in time and um, so that created some problems. The J was the first model where uh, they really worked hard to um, overcome this detriment to it. Uh, they changed the angle of incidence on the uh, rear elevator. Um, the um, counterweights were, were even originally put on some of the newer ones and that just basically helped to reduce the, the possibility of uh, flutter. They had a fairly small elevator for the amount of square footage that they had uh, with the stabilizer and uh, during high speed maneuvers this would make the um, rudder um, or the elevator uh, potentially flutter so this counterweighting uh, helped to eliminate that or reduce it. All right, and here we have the port side boom, much the same. Uh, we have some other pieces here, which looks to me like the front gear leg, perhaps. These, I'm not really sure, look like they might be possibly parts for the uh, intakes on the, on the chin that I mentioned earlier. Uh, these have some flash. These are going to have to be cleaned up. Um, rivet details, very nice. And for the basic um, boom, doesn't appear to be much flash. We'll see how it fits. And another screw. Okay, this one has some flash. Um, we have some some more chin covers. These appear to be propeller backings. Um, these, I believe, are air scoops, uh, which would go in the engine compartment. Uh, we have some gear doors, and uh, looks to me like a landing gear leg, and a couple of pilot figures, and then a propeller. The on the subject of propellers, the P P-38 had counter-rotating propellers. And the difficult part for knowing this, as far as which one goes where, is that there were three actual versions built. Um, they rotated to the outside, 
they rotated to the inside, and then there was a short run of P-38 made entirely for the British, which had right-hand rotation on both sides. Now, it is my understanding that the J, and right on through the rest of the run, um, rotated um, to the outside. In other words, on the port side, if you're facing the plane, the port side would be on your left, and the propeller would rotate to the outside. And on the starboard side, facing the plane, it would rotate to the right. And of course, this is opposite if you're in the plane, but you get the idea. The props rotated toward the outside edge of the wing. And, and what this did was, in an engine failure, when torque was applied to the surviving engine to increase power, the torque would not make it tip toward uh, the, the powered side, but would bring it back toward the center, of the center line of the plane, which made it easier to control. Um, if they were the opposite direction, you see, the torque would turn the plane into the dead engine. And so this is where I have to check my notes because I may have it entirely backwards. But uh, it had to do with uh, engine torque and operating on single single engine. And uh, the P-38 was incredible because um, even on a single engine, it could achieve over 230 miles per hour on a single engine. Uh, this was incredible and really helped a lot of pilots survive. The biggest thing was for new pilots to learn uh, twin engines and uh, survive engine outs and so on because it, uh, single engine for a fighter pilot or twin engines for a fighter pilot were kind of a unique thing. And here we have the other prop. We have uh, some more of the gear legs, we have gear doors. These are the um, doors for the in, uh, machine gun uh, bay, or uh, if you build the other versions, um, Pathfinder, for example, this would have been a, uh, a door entryway into the, the uh, bombardier navigator compartment. And uh, these parts don't look too bad. Some flash on the gears, um, they're small. Uh, some of these other parts, I'm not sure exactly yet what they are. And uh, they don't look too bad. And here we have the lower wing section. Um, again, very, very nice detail. Uh, panel lines are raised, not sunk. Uh, they are sunk around the flaps. Ailerons. Um, pretty nice. Holes are very clean. A um, little bit of flash. I see some flash right here. Um, some flash around the tip. Uh, shouldn't be too big a difficulty. And some pieces that just fell out. Uh, a couple of missiles. Won't use those. Uh, this says, I have no idea. It, uh, oh, it appears to maybe be a ammunition box delivering ammo to some of the guns inside the nose. And piece of screw. Uh, here is the business end. The P-38 had a 20 millimeter cannon, 450 calibers, in the fighter version and the night fighter version as well. Um, the piece looks pretty nice, nice rivet detail, no real flash. Okay. Now here's the instructions. They are written in English, French, Spanish, um, standard Revell uh, booklet type in black and white. Uh, here's decals. Um, by the way, I will not be building Marge. I will not be 
building the Night Fighter or the Pathfinder, 